starting to the left side of the map, we have our Terran player for SK Telecom. He lost to Hawk, he won every single game besides this one match. Now he's up against a fellow Casper player. He is... SK Telecom T1 Fantasy. Fantasy. You said DT35, looking very clean. His opponent so far out of luck, not able to take a single set. Wants to turn things around here and get that wild card spot. He is. Wong Jin stars fly. And even winning this match does not secure him that wild card spot, but it gives him a tough journey. That's his reward for winning this. What is flying going to do now? 0-3 in the group. He needs a win. But at the same time, a win would already make sure that Fantasy is in a tough spot and would not be able to make it. On the Korean stream, they're showing that Fantasy terrorist picture that's actually so popular. <laughs> um, I'm sad we didn't get to see that actually. But uh, I'm sure someone will screenshot that from the Korean stream and put it in the live report threads. A late gate for flying, actually. It looked like he was going into Nexus first, but now he's probably going to do double gas with two in each. Nope, just one. Just a late gate in general, but it gets his economy going. You know, later on, the the next set is actually going to be so important. Uh, if The winner of Nesti versus Huck is definitely going to be in Codes. Right now, Fantasy still also has a shot. His big problem is that he tied with Huck. So in a tie situation, Huck has tied with all the players that were at the beginning of this round of three games on the same score. He won against Center, he won against uh, Fantasy. If he now edges out a win against Nasty, of course, there's no doubt that he will play yeah. in the first spot in the map. But Fantasy is not out of the run for Kodas just yet. He needs okay. a win here on the other hand. If Flying is able to defeat Fantasy, the only Casper versus Casper match that we have today it would be heartbreaking for the SK, -com, SK Telecom Terran player. And now, think about what Fantasy has seen here. Flying sees his command center timing, that's really important. What Fantasy has seen is that actually he is behind as far as it goes for building structures. You very rarely have a situation where a Nexus goes down before the command center, but it does happen rarely. This is a big map. Fantasy now has to make a choice. Do I go for a fast third or do I pressure him? It looks like he wants to go into the double barracks follow-up here. This is actually the build that we see most often these days. There's love this. Three barracks, pressure with marines, hold map control, go into my tag. That's where we see these two gases going down. The double refinery that you just mentioned now on the way in. Uh, yes, Fantasy tries to start, uh, wants to try and uh, get his tag up. At the same time, we have flying now on two bases as well. And what exactly do you think is going to be his build here? What is he trying to do? A third base? I not don't that think common. so. That's not really not his, we see. his style necessarily either. He's much more aggressive, I feel, especially on these maps that are not good for Protoss. He adds three additional gateways. So he's going to go into a four gateway pressure attack here. This is not an all-in, but it does need to do something, or you're going to find yourself behind as a Protoss who went for this four gateway pressure. You know what's also really important, I didn't mention this about the group just yet, but if Flying actually wins against Fantasy, it means that Hug is good as. Yes. It means no one who he hasn't beaten can tie with him. He can tie with Fantasy and he can tie with Santa, but he beat both. Exactly. Forward pylon goes up here, really nice one. It's the one that you always want to plant before you go through that line of sight blocker, because who knows if you're going to lose your probe after that. You want to make sure you at least have one, even if it's not the closest one. We've seen this already with Hux, one of his forward pylons. He wasn't able to get the closer one, he got the, the further one up. This is a great position for flying, second one. Warp gate research is done. He's going to get his first round of warp ins at that first pylon. And then he's going to walk up to the second one, hit that second round of Warpins. And Fantasy, currently with only one bunker, he starts the additional ones as he figures out what's going on. He yeah, scans and he sees scans. the four gates. He scans, sees the gates, and now he knows what's up. And he tries to bunker up immediately. Those units for flying are not ready just yet. And SCV is being used to give a bit of a warning when flying is going to move into those bunkers. They are really, really close. Will he be able to make it happen? Here come the SCVs trying to surround the bunker to make sure that force fields won't stop them immediately. Bunker number two is up. Bunker Guardian number shield. three, two. The Guardian Shield is here. We have the first few force fields. Super clutch bunker timing here for Fantasy. Gets up at the last second with that scan. Even gets out of the bunker so that his Marines can't get trapped. Pushes flying back. He needs that stim though. He needs to buy time. 
This is such a great timing by Flying. He's actually hitting this. Look at how much time is still left yep. on the sim. But he needs one more warp in before he can break through that. With this many units, he can't have it. Exactly. With the next round of warp ins, he actually stops. He goes for double forge. He could have tried to go for the additional attack, but in this case, now he's going back, and he has a massive lead in Harvest. He's at 38 to 27 with his super fast Nexus. And he's going for the double pro production once again, whereas Fantasy has stopped to produce Harvesters. Fantasy is still waiting for the next attack to happen. He has a third mock up. He's waiting for his tip, only producing units. This is actually pretty cool what Flying has done. This is really smart. This is not your normal four gateway pressure. This is fast with heavy economy. Two additional probes, put them up to 44 versus 27. And right now, Fantasy is supply block, not even making two double, double SVs for that period of time. And with this pressure that Flying is putting on, Fantasy doesn't know what's really out there, so he has to keep these bunkers alive. He's even going for the Guardian Shield because he wants to uh, just fake this attack. And Fantasy, he realizes he has to go back into the SV production, but that definitely bought Flying a lot of time. Additionally, supply blocked here is fantasy. It continues to become a problem for him. And when you're not hitting your units, when you have this tech advantage, you can't utilize that tech advantage over your opponent. Force to cancel on those else flying. Actually, probably happy about that because he got the whole stim out of those units. Look at that. That is a massive stim he just used. Yeah. Combat shield is now coming up. 1-1 one, one being researched for flying. The Protoss player is in a really good spot here. He's 15 harvesters ahead. It's tough to take a third base on this map when you have all the pieces of the puzzle to do so, like Flying does right now. He should be able to make it work. On the other hand, he's adding four gateways, and he may just hit with 1-1. One, one. I think it's much more likely to see the third base, but consider that Blink is not going to be very useful in defending a ground attack at the third base. It will be useful in defending drops in the main, so he makes that choice. Charge would have been a very good... Uh, decision here. With Blink, he can't do too much, but he could try to trap maybe a medivac, as you said. If he sees a drop coming with an observer and then he sets a trap, he could take one out or yeah. even two before to anything me, is unloaded. To me, what this Blink says is I'm going to take my Nexus really late, and it's probably going to be after you try to pressure me. Then, when I have my charge, I'll move over and take it. Since I'm ahead in harvesters and ahead in mining, and I know because I'm scouting right now with my Zelt that you don't have a third base, I actually don't have to make my Nexus yet until you show your hand. Are you going to attack me or are you going to make a third base? Until you make one of those choices, I can just sit here and keep attacking. And here comes the drop of the stalkers. They are ready, and he's going to see it. Fantasy has to be careful. He's losing him, Matty back. Best shot here for flying. This is what his blink upgrade was for. He takes down one of the medivacs and fantasy. He is in so much trouble here. Plus two, plus two has been started for flying. Fantasy with plus one now on the production tab. Huck fans are certainly excited now. Things are looking good for the Protoss player. Yeah. Flying is... He's taken his third base. He's traded well with the army. If he actually gets this fight, fantasy is not paying attention at all. Oh, Fancy could have gotten such a good trade out of this. He's still going to get a few Zealots, but if Charge were done, that would have been a very different story. That was really weird. Ghost Academy goes up. Third base for Fantasy is also going up. That's why Flying Start is. He saw yeah. it with the Zealot. Both of them still at the same supply, but the upgrades. That's where the difference in play comes. Yep. We have Storm, as you said, now started. Charge nearly completed. Plus two, plus two. Look at these timings. Plus two, plus two is nearly done when Fantasy is just about to start his plus one armor upgrade. Yeah. And he didn't even do so yet. Flying looks like he's almost taken a, a page out of Hunt's book with uh, how he's always hitting his in front of his nice blink the there. The drop attempt again into the main base, a few stalkers in position, but he's trying to take a different path. The ground army comes in, but this time Flying has the charge upgrade. Splits his units perfectly here. All of his ground armies as naturally, he could go either way. Unfortunately though, these zealots are not in position. Fancy gets a little bit lucky here and circumvents them, and Storm uh -oh. is ready, but he doesn't have enough energy. Now he does! Flying pulls the army back, he pulls the rest of his army back and there's still a force of fantasy trying to hit the third base and this is exactly what happens but Flying moves back to defend his third, the main base is under attack and there's nothing that Flying warps in. Yeah, he, he warps in two zealots but they die, warps in two more zealots, they will eventually get taken out here but 
the most important thing is, is like you said, they didn't panic and keep his, his army running towards the main. He kept it at his third. If he had done that, he would have lost the Nexus. Plus two, plus two against one attack upgrade. That is the situation in the terms of upgrades now. Frost players are really figuring out how to take thirds on this map. It's, it's really happening. Finally, the double upgrade for Fantasy, but it's going to take quite a while for him to complete it. And in every single battle, Flying will have an advantage. Yeah, not only one set of upgrades, but one and a half, I guess you could say. 2-2 two, two versus 1-0. And the situation for Flying now is that he also starts 3-3 three, three and switches into a second Robotics to try to trick Fantasy's tech here. And Flying doesn't forget about the next set of upgrades. He's going into 3-3. Three, three. He's going to hit this third base so hard. And if he gets the Templar at the bottom of the ramp, Fancy can't even come down. If he actually gets over here, Fancy has no idea. If he gets over here and Fancy is at the top of the ramp, he will lose the game because he won't be able to run down and protect his third base against the storms. Now he sees it. He needs to get down that ramp right now. The force fields are decent. Shut him out at least for now. The Templar not in a position great to, snipes. Uh, to hit the storm behind the force fields. The snipes are good. The, high, the ghosts are doing a great job here. Four ghosts against six high Templars. Flying now tries to find another angle, but ah. the ghosts again already finished. You yeah. really taking some great snipes here. Well done, and a nice scan. Revealing everything here. Can he hit an EMP? No, but another snipe. Yep, definitely worth it to kill those Templar. In the supply, they are still even. The upgrades are still a problem for Fantasy, but he is looking a little bit better than he did earlier. Another problem for Fantasy is that he is really committing to ghosts without knowledge that this heavy Colossus transition takes place. He also loses some SCVs. The worker count right now is even for the two players, so that's something to really consider about Fantasy's income. You can see he's got a huge mineral bank right now as well. Another pylon goes down. Flying wants to take this fight while he has the upgrade advantage. He wants to hit those storms. He's too scared. He knows that the ghost yeah. could pose a big problem for him. He doesn't have any Colossi yet. Armor upgrade is completed for Fantasy. And the plus two attack upgrade will be done fairly soon as well. Plus three, plus three for the Protoss player is there though. So Fantasy has to start the next few upgrades if he wants to get even. Right now, flying it with that Colossus positioning. I'm wondering if he's going to go for a Colossus drop. It doesn't seem likely, but you never know. It's a weird rally he's got there. 3-3. Three, three. Colossus range, everything is, is continuing forward here for Flying, but Fantasy's army is so strong yeah. and it's the right composition right Fantasy now. Fantasy has so many ghosts, Wolf. He has 12 and he's getting another 4. He's already setting everything up to counter those Colossi. <laughs> Look at this defense in the main base. It's a cannon, has a temple in position, a few patrolling zealots. The transition into Vikings is now underway for Fancy as well. He had a second starport. It's that reactor that's on the production line is about to finish up so he can make four Vikings at a time. Resources ship lost. Much better for Fantasy. 2,500 for him and 5,000 for Flying. Flying it just has so many minerals he's dumping into these Zealot run by as he forces the stamina. It's, it's this very positional. These now Zealots Fantasy has to move back. Didn't do a lot. It's positional, yes, but this is also a lot of resources that he's investing here. And this pylon will be killed eventually. Second robotics facility is now coming up for the Protoss. He wants to have the double Colossus production. Five Zealots are going to run into the third base of Fantasy again. He's got the high ground. And Fantasy has his upgrade started. Also another CC. This game is getting uh, very tense and exciting. Another run by at the bottom left. The MPs here are really they good. They are amazing and he's chasing him down the ramp. Good feedbacks on those units coming out of the Warp Prism, but the Warp Prism dies to the Vikings, and now Fantasy has a pretty good position. His upgrades are still lacking, but there are not really a ton of Templar. And at the bottom left, we have Zealots run by and taking down SCVs. This is something that Fantasy has to deal with, but he's moving in and snipes all those high Templars. Here come the EMPs. No storms here. The positioning here for Fantasy's army is perfect. There's the storm. The storm is oh, there. Wow, the second the one, two. The Colossi pushed this back and flying as a massive lead. He's killed all the SCVs, every last SCV at that third base. Fantasy is in trouble. He had a nice position army-wise, but this is looking worse and worse for him by the second. His upgrades in the fight were, of course, in favor of flying. Fantasy's upgrade still not done. He's waiting for plus two armor and plus three attack. Those zealots at the bottom left did a number on Fantasy's economy. His SCV count is now down to 44 against 68. Army supply is nearly even flying with a slight lead here he's got the better unit composition and the better economy he's also 
eaten a ton of EMPs, but Fantasy doesn't have that many units to back up the Ghost, and as soon as the energy recharges for flying, he can go for the attack. He's going to safely take a fourth base here. He uses the Zealots positionally once again, and Fantasy caught in a weird angle against that ramp. Uh-oh, Fantasy is in a lot of trouble here. Good EMPs, EMPs though, and this is actually going to force flying yeah. back until he's got his Templar ready. The micro is something we pointed out earlier. Fantasy is known for it, and this is what keeps him in the game. Now his armor upgrade is done, plus the attack is nearly complete. He's closing the gap in upgrades, even though flying Flying started his shields. Hawk is watching this. Everyone is watching this. Will Fantasy lose to Flying? Will Flying make sure that Fantasy can't get a direct spot into Code S and the Canadian Protoss player advances? We are going to find out right now. 50 supply lead for Flying. Flying it needs to shut down, of course, this fourth base because his fourth is not ready yet. And Fantasy is going to try to use this to replenish his army supply. I don't know if he has enough army to do it though. Planetary is not ready. The Colossi hits are excellent. There are not enough Vikings here. There is not enough fantasy and too much flying. Those Colossi take down the Marines. The ghosts are gone. The Planetary isn't ready. The Vikings can't do anything. The supply of plummets down for fantasy. It looks like Huck is in Code S. His Colossi are going to go down maybe to a Planetary, but it doesn't matter. He actually saves them. They survive at the last second there. Flying is trying to end this game. He kills the destructible debris here. He's ready to move in and finish Fantasy off. Cloak is on the way for Fantasy, but it's much too late. Here comes Flying's final blow. GG! Flying loses the game. Hawk is in code S, and the up and downs proves themselves to be a very tough turn for the Casper players. Once again, we don't have a single one of them advancing, even though Flying took an early 2 0 lead in the group. Yeah. Fantasy not looking happy about that, but Flying, despite not being able to have this code S spot, looked really, really determined to win that game. His play was very strong. We saw a similar play style to what we saw from Huck. Double Forge and really nice hitting all those Chrono Boosts. The way he went into his third base, I have to stress it again. Having vision of your opponent's third when he makes it, whether you go blink or charge, you sit in your base if you go blink. If you go charge, that's when you kind of extend yourself out. But he had all the answers for the drops. He had all the answers for the third base. <laughs> Flying takes one game, and that's the game against his fellow Casper player. And now Fantasy has no chance of getting first or second place. Only third place is still available to him. Hawk is in Code S. He's done it. And we are done with uh, another set of three matches. We are jumping into a short commercial break, and when we are back, we will see the last three games of the day of the up and down group. E, stay tuned, guys, and we'll be back in a few.